In this deep dive, we're gonna use Windows Azure to create a virtual machine. So it's part of its infrastructure as a service offering. And we're gonna publish a Minecraft server as the example. Now, if you have an MSDN subscription, you get Azure benefits as part of that. Um, if you don't, you just wanna try it out, you can go to windowsazure.com and go for a free trial. If your company has Azure services, obviously you can use that, but they probably don't want you using their corporate Azure subscription to host Minecraft. So I'm going to free trial, try it free. And you're gonna go through and do the basic offering. So you want the 90 day free trial. You're gonna to have to give it a credit card. It won't charge you. It's gonna lock it into those three hours. It's gonna enable you to verify your account. So walk through this wizard to actually get your free trial. So you filled in those details. It's now gonna create your Windows Azure subscription. So we now have Azure, I'm gonna to go to the portal. And the first thing we're gonna do is create a new virtual machine. I'm gonna close down this tutorial, but if you've never used Azure, certainly you should run through this. I can close this down. You can see these are all the different options we have in Azure. So what I wanna do is create a new virtual machine. I'm gonna create it from the gallery. So this is actually gonna use some of the templates Microsoft already have in their environment. So I'm gonna create a Windows Server 2012 data center. The release date is really which patch revision this template is at. So I'm gonna take the latest one. And this name is within your Azure subscription. So you can really call this anything you want. So I'm gonna call this Minecraft Server. Then you have different sizes. So obviously the bigger the virtual machine is, the more of your Azure benefit it's gonna take up. You get charged for the existence of the virtual machine. Even if it's not turned on, you get charged if it exists. So if you're doing this for a test, you're probably gonna to wanna to delete this after you've played around and got this running. So I'm gonna create a small VM, but extra small would also work for Minecraft. We're gonna to have to create a username within that VM, and you wanna give it a strong password. Make sure you remember this username and password. It's very important. You're gonna need it later to actually connect. This is just a standalone virtual machine. It doesn't have to be connected to any others. I need to give it a unique DNS name. So now maybe this is gonna be for this, Sav Tech Test Mine Craft. And where do I wanna create it? So I'll say East US but this is gonna to have to be unique in sort of all of Azure. So you're not just gonna be able to call it Minecraft. I don't need an availability set and I'll enable PowerShell remoting. Now that's how gonna go and create that virtual machine. That's gonna take a little bit of time. We can see the details here of what it's doing. And we track the tasks on the active progress. So I'm gonna let that create. Once it's finished provisioning, we actually wanna add an extra disk. So I'm gonna say attach, empty disk, our default storage location. I'm just gonna create this 100 gigs. Now leave the host cache preferences as the default. There are some advanced configurations we can do as part of sort of databases, but for this, it doesn't matter. So we're just gonna create a 100 gig extra disk. Now it's gonna attach that. Then once this is complete, we're actually gonna go and connect into this virtual machine. So now that's finished, we can actually just connect to it. So we're gonna connect using remote desktop protocol, but it's not gonna use the standard port. It's a little bit of extra security. I mean, people can scan the ports and they'll find it, but it does add an extra level of kind of indirection. So you do connect. What it's actually gonna do is it's gonna give you an RDP file, which has been configured with the correct port. So we can open this up. This is my RDP file. You can see it's got the different port that I'm actually connecting to via the RDP. I've just changed the display to 720. And what I want is for my keystrokes to always go to the remote computer, even when it's in a window. So I'm gonna say connect. And this is where it's really important that I remembered that username and password that I specified when I created this virtual machine in Azure. So I'm passing those credentials. I'm gonna trust the certificate, so don't ask me again. I'm 
So now I'm at the console of this virtual machine. I'm gonna fire up server manager and the first thing I wanna do is disable the Internet Explorer enhanced security. And people do this a lot, but it's actually gonna get in the way of some of the stuff that I wanna do as part of this configuration. So I'm gonna to go to the local server. So I'm going to local server. You can see there's that name, that Minecraft SRV we entered at the first part of that VM creation. And I'm going on that right hand side to the middle. You can see I've got 1.75 gigs of RAM and I'm gonna change that IE enhanced security configuration to off. So remember this was a small virtual machine. So that small virtual machine has one dedicated core and 1.75 gigs of memory. So I've turned off the IE enhanced security configuration. I'm gonna close server manager. And the first thing I need is to actually install Java. So we're gonna to go to java.com. And by default, it will try and install the 32-bit version of Java. Minecraft will actually perform much better running the 64-bit. So fine, we can use the recommended settings. So I want the free Java download, but I'm not gonna just do the agree and start free. I'm gonna go down to the bottom and see all Java downloads. And I'm gonna run the offline 64-bit and then just run that. And I can accept all the defaults of this installation. I don't need to change destination folder, just let it install. And really the cool point this is showing is this isn't just for Microsoft workloads. I mean, Minecraft is something definitely not written to run in a cloud service, but with infrastructure as a service, I can do that. First thing I'm gonna do is remember I added that extra disk. And that's gonna be used to store our Minecraft information. So I'm gonna format it as GPT, sorry, initialize it as GPT. Now I'm gonna format it NTFS. And this is just gonna be our data drive basically. So I give it a volume label, it's gonna be anything you want. Quick format. And then I'm actually gonna go in and make sure we run our Minecraft and store our data in this folder. So that's now formatted. We can now go ahead and actually create a folder on that new drive. So I'm gonna start up Explorer, go to my F drive, and create a new folder. I just call it Minecraft. So the next thing I now need to do is actually go and download the Minecraft server. So we're gonna go back to the web browser and go to minecraft.net. Go to download and under multiplayer server, we're just gonna right click and save as that Minecraft server.exe. And we're gonna save it to that F colon Minecraft folder we created. Now close this and there we go. Now at this point, I can just run this. This is actually really a Java jar file but it says an exe, and then it's gonna go and create the default files. If I jump back to Explorer, you'll see it's creating a bunch of files in that folder. There's the world and the configuration files. But I wouldn't actually be able to connect to it yet. There's a few more things we need to do. So notice here, it's listening on port 25565. So it doesn't, no, it's running on Windows Server. It doesn't know about the firewall. So the first thing I have to do is actually create a firewall exception. So I just type fire on the start screen, fire up the firewall admin tool, and I'm gonna create a new inbound rule. So right click, new rule. It's for a port. It's for TCP and it's 25565. And then next, and I can now just accept the defaults. I'm gonna allow the connection to all networks. I'm just gonna call it Minecraft. I 
And then if you actually open that up, you could go and see the details of exactly what that rule does, but it's exactly what we just configured. It's gonna enable anything into its local port 25565 from remote port, it doesn't matter. Now it's still not gonna work. And the reason it won't work is because Windows Azure doesn't know, well, hey, I need to forward that through. So I need to create an endpoint in Azure to say, hey, look, if someone's trying to connect to 25565, this is the port I need to actually connect it through onto that virtual machine. So in the Azure website, that portal, I'm gonna click on the virtual machine and go to endpoints in that top menu. And you'll see the one for RDP. Do you remember we don't use 3389 by default? Well, there's that public port and what it maps to. So I wanna say I wanna add a new endpoint. And it's very, very simple in this case. It's gonna be the same target port and local port. So we're gonna use that 25565. So I'm gonna say add the endpoint, just call it Minecraft, the name doesn't matter. 25565 is the public, and 25565 is my private. So now, someone who's connecting through will get mapped to that port on my virtual machine. So that will now work. There is one other thing I wanna change. Look at the amount of memory by default it's using. It's very, very small. So that will start to limit the number of users that can actually connect. So I'm gonna close this down. I'm gonna create a start.bat file. This is gonna what's gonna trigger and start this in the future. Now I need to show extensions because by default this is just gonna be a text file. So I'm gonna remove the .txt. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call that Minecraft server, which again, remember I said is a jar file really. And I'm gonna tell it to use a gig of memory. And I'm saving that. So you can copy that down. And now when I run it, You'll notice the amount of memory now, I've got lots of memory free. So 94% free. So a lot more users will be able to run on this. Now remember, I'm using a small VM, so I have one core. You probably would get by with a very small VM, which is a shared core. But if you know you're gonna have 20, 30 users, small is probably the right size. So I can test this, I'm ready to go. I know the public DNS name when I created this virtual machine. That unique name I said you had to create. So I can now jump actually to my Minecraft client. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna make myself an operator. So you open up the ops.txt and just add in your name and then we'll start it again. So now I'm actually ready to connect. So I'm on my Minecraft. I'm gonna do multiplayer. I'm gonna add that server so to add that server, remember, I have to actually type in that DNS name, that unique name. So it was that savtech test minecraft.cloudapp.net. And now I'm ready to go. I have created my own Minecraft server in Azure. And there we go. You can wander around and basically just do Minecraft stuff. You can see the little spikes as I connected. You can see the log of the connectivity, all working with that server running in Azure. And once you've done with this, once you're happy with the test, remember you get charged while it exists. So when you're finished, so I can go and see the monitoring in here, if you wanted to actually see the resource utilization, etc. So it's nice to go and track what's happening. And you have that great dashboard view to get an overview. So remember it's showing me that DNS name again, that bottom right corner if you had forgotten it. But remember, you're gonna get charged while this exists. So I'm gonna shut this down. And then once it's stopped, I'm just gonna delete it. So now I'm not gonna be charged for this VM existing anymore. Now 
Now those VM, the VHD files didn't actually get deleted, so they're still there. So if ever in the future I may want to go and create a new VM again and use my existing VHDs that I created and configured, it's still there. And there they are. So that was it. Now, if you are uh, an avid Minecraft person, there's a few other things you can do. So here I've actually connected back to a Minecraft server. And remember I added myself to the operator list. So if you do this slash command, op, and then your name, you're now considered an operator. So this means you can do cool stuff. You can modify the world. So I can change the game mode, for example, so there aren't bad guys trying to kill me. Game mode zero just makes it creative. So now there are no bad guys, you can just wander around and create things, create buildings. There's a huge number of commands. For example, I can actually change the time. So it does give you some help and you can tab, so slash time, I wanna set it to be daytime. So it just gives you a lot more power in what you can do. And now I can just go around and try and get some wool by killing some poor sheep. But that's it. And again, research this stuff. There's a lot of mods available to customize what you can do. But you are now running a full Minecraft server in Azure. I hope that was useful. And again, maybe you don't want to use Minecraft, but it gives you an idea of just how flexible Azure infrastructure as a service really is. And thank you.